It's Saturday, July 23rd, and we're going to go over a stock that we can get ready to trade on Monday. This one is American Tower. We're going to first start with the fundamental analysis of American Tower. You can see I've got the pros and the cons. You can pause the video and read these uh, one by one, but the main ones I wanted to go over on the cons side of the equation are American Towers high debt which I'll get into more detail later and also it's very high multiple it's at 56 times 2011 estimates and about 40 times 2012 estimates and that's more at the upper end of the range that we want to pay for anything is about 40 times next year's earnings here it's PE is the main one you can go over all these questions fundamentally to see what this stock does but we've got a PE of 43 which in comparison with its main competitors Crown Castle has a PE of 54 times 2012 estimates and SBA communications isn't even going to earn any money next year Its peg ratio is kind of high. Uh, two is the most we would really want to pay. So again, the main point being that this is an expensive stock, but we can see it's expensive for a reason. Because if you go over how it's performed in the past 12 months, it's got uh, a 12% return, six months a 7% return, three months a 6% return. So it has outperformed the index, the S&P index, uh, stocks that outperform tend to keep on outperforming, so it's expensive for a reason. We just want to be aware of that, and uh, this is why I think we want to buy it now. We'll get into the technicals later. But again, it's got a lot of debt, $5.6 billion uh, in total debt. $75 million of that is due this year, but we look at how much cash this company is generating, and it's $674 million annually. So it has about $600 million uh, in excess free cash flow, so to, it's certainly going to be able to pay its debts next year. Um, we just want to keep that high debt in mind, because next year, uh, will it have to sell any assets to pay its debt in the future? Uh, we don't know, but in 2012, I really don't think I'll still be holding this stock anyway. So, for right now, it's alright. Now, let's get into this technically. You can see back here in February, we had this volatility squeeze uh, on the daily chart. What the volatility squeeze is is just these Bollinger Bands. You can see how tight they got right here and then you can see resistance right here, flag pattern. Let's clean this up. Resistance this little flag pattern, then the breakout that led to this rally. Uh, we were in on this rally. Uh, this was kind of a short squeeze, obviously, because this stock went up about, oh, 10, 15 percent in a couple of days only. Then uh, we sold it right here after this breakdown uh, out of this big, huge, last kind of capitulation buy by the shorts. Uh, when you see something that breaks out like this and has this big green candlestick right here, if it's going to keep on going higher, it's generally going to hold in the upper 50% uh, upper half of the candlestick. And you can see on this candlestick right here, it broke below around this 50% line. So that's when we decided to sell it. And then on this day right here, this big spike down on massive volume, that was when AT&T announced that they were going to buy T-Mobile and the market thought that the consolidation in the carrier space was going to lead to uh, lower revenues for American Tower because there would be uh, lots of uh, consolidation and uh, synergies between T-Mobile and AT&T so both of those companies wouldn't have had to lease as much space from American Tower but we can see what's happened uh, since then we had another failed breakout here this gap down I don't know what that was about but uh, 
it remains that we're here again and what we're getting is another little volatility squeeze right here you can see the Bollinger Bands are getting pretty tight uh, as opposed to right here when they were very wide these Bollinger Bands are just a measure of volatility so when they're really wide from top to bottom that uh, means that there's lots of volatility and conversely when they're really tight like they were back here and when they're starting to get just right here um, that's um, indicating low volatility so the reason we want to get in this right now is you can see this setup right here where we've got a convergence of the 50 day moving average the 100 day moving average and the 200 day moving average so this is what we want to see we want to see the price above the 20 day moving average that's this middle Bollinger Band we got the price above the 20 which is above the 50 which is above the 100 which is above the 200 day so it's doing exactly what a nice stock should do it's got the right sequence everything's on top of each other and what I really like about this is this tight little squeeze it's coming into right here I'll show you why I think this is a good time to buy it right now once we get into the weekly chart but you can see what happened is we got this big move up to fill this gap here that's what gaps do they get filled the retracement only back to the 50 day so it's holding the 50 day moving average we look at the stochastics we're just getting this stochastic crossover where this yellow line is just about to cross over the white line that's the percent K is about to cross right over this percent D uh, it's a Larry Williams stochastics you can read more about that in John Murphy's book technical analysis of the stock market then also what I like is we've got this MACD crossover this is a MACD histogram I've got uh, you can see when the MACD is just about to cross over it's gonna go from red right here into blue so we can see what happens when we've got the blue here big blue ones the stock goes up okay stock goes up big blue uh, when the stock is going down these red MACDs are about at the maximum uh, peak here this is a trough the maximum trough we get a low in the stock the maximum peak corresponds with a maximum uh, peak in the MACD so we can see as an indicator of future strength that right about here we're just getting the crossover in the MACD combined with just about getting a crossover in the stochastics and if they do cross over they haven't yet but they look like they're just about to right now we get a a higher low in the stochastics right here than uh, right here so all these are good we got a low here, a higher low, a higher low still, and a higher low still. So our analysis is that we think this is about to cross over. We'll go into the weekly now. And this is what I like. This is a just a really nice uptrend. It's holding its uptrend line. This goes all the way back to February, March of 09. Now this actually bottomed uh, in December of 09, uh, December 08, uh, way before the market bottomed. So remember the market bottomed in March 09. So this is the weekly, but this is what I like about it. Let's zoom in. We can see what happened when we got the Bollinger Bands right here. We got high volatility, which leads to low volatility which again leads to high volatility measured by the Bollinger Bands you can see that they're really wide right here which again leads to low volatility which leads to uh, a bit higher volatility but that's where we are right here we had a bunch of sideways consolidation we get the uptrend consolidation uptrend consolidation in correspondence with these Bollinger Bands and we got the failed breakout right here but uh, what actually happened is it just kind of held within this Bollinger Band complex here. So we've got this massive squeeze that started all the way back since February of uh, this year, 2011. So we're assuming that 
this volatility, low volatility situation is going to resolve to the upside like it did here. Okay, we got the upside move, consolidation, upside, consolidation, upside, consolidation, uh, failed upside breakout, which led to more, more, more consolidation. So you can see this thing has just been moving sideways since November of 2010. So on the weekly, we're thinking that it's going to look something like this. We get this low volatility situation here that's going to lead to a nice little Bollinger Band expansion. We thought that move was going to occur back here. Something that looked more like this, uh, but we didn't get that. So I think that this time it's really going to be a successful breakout. And the Bollinger Bands are going to kind of expand just like this. And the stock is going to kind of maybe do something like this and just ride up this Bollinger Band and be, oh, a $70, $75 stock in a couple months. So these Bollinger Bands on a weekly, you get the, get the squeeze and expansion is a very powerful uh, move where you make a lot of money in a short amount of time. So that's why we want to be in on this early. Let's go back to the daily and do uh, a daily analysis of this again. Uh, we can see that we got... Uh, this consolidation right here, let's actually zoom in a lot. This consolidation after the, the filling the gap, we can see this resistance level kind of right here, and this is what I like about it. It closed right above this little resistance line here. It's still kind of, I guess you could say, it's uh, in a box here in a little consolidation range. If we draw this, you can tell uh, that maybe we might get something like, I don't know, maybe a little pullback, maybe down to here, and then a breakout, uh, something like that. So we want to definitely keep some stops, maybe, maybe a stop or something. You can do it, I don't know, here or maybe below the 200-day moving average. Uh, but I think that this one is going to have enough power to make it out of this uh, and start expanding here on the daily, which then will in turn lead to an expansion here on the weekly. Uh, so that's really, really what we want to look for, is this kind of expansion. It's going to do that and then ride up the upper Bollinger Band. So that's our technical take on uh, American Tower and we mirror that with our our uh, fundamental analysis of American Tower. So that's why I want to be involved in American Tower right right here. We want to buy that at 53.32. So that is our trade on American Tower.